Thank you, Stephanie. I think I can eat those for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, bananas, chocolate, yes. So thanks for staying tuned. And I'd like to show you a video that will give you a little insight into our next guest. Take a look. New Year's is usually the deadliest day on roads across the country because of crashes related to alcohol. And in 2002, two families' lives were changed forever when a then 19-year-old man drove drunk and killed a woman in a wrong way accident. In the 15 years since, he has asked for and received forgiveness and is now dedicating his life to keep others, including his victim's nephew, from going down the same path. NBC's Carrie Sanders has his story. The John Templeton driving the car and the one in that mugshot are 15 years apart. Happened. I never planned to drink that night. I never certainly planned to drink and drive. Only 19 at the time, John drove his car drunk, speeding on the wrong side of a Tampa interstate, slamming into two cars, killing 18-year-old Julie Buckner. And I think about Julie and just that this is the spot where, at 18 years old, you know, her life ended because of my choice. A drinking and driving story that, as you'll see, takes turns no one could have ever expected. It begins with a highly unusual admission, as the Highway Patrol report noted on the night of the accident, with a blood alcohol of .225, John Templeton confessed. I knew better than to drink and drive, he said. What will her family think of me? Wow. Before I introduce our guest today, what I didn't tell you before the clip is that that story involved me and my family. Julie Buckner was my baby sister, and she was 18 years old. And that incident began a healing journey, a redemption journey, and a forgiveness journey and that is what we are here to talk about today. So may I introduce to you John Templeton. Thanks for being with us today. Jennifer, Thank you. it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. So that was almost two decades ago that that happened. And uh, the pain of it and the reality of it, it, it never goes it, away. No. And what's unique, I think, about this story is that according to the law and according to the court system and according to lawyers and wise counsel, we were really never supposed to meet or talk. And yet you defied all of that advice and all of those uh, suggestions. And I clearly remember the day that you came to the place where I worked and you and your dad said that you wanted to talk. I remember that as well, um, and I'm always um, very moved, um, and gotta get emotional as well when I see the clips and you know see a young Julie. And um, but um, mm. it's never but easy. I, yeah, it's never easy to talk no, about. No, and I'm and, and I'm sitting here so blessed, and I'm so um, I'm really so happy and so grateful to be here to discuss um, what I have been a recipient of is forgiveness. And, and the impact it's had on my life and hopefully the impact I've been able to have on others. And two decades later, you know, the 19-year-old with the little scruff <laughs> and the South, University of South Florida student um, who found himself in a position that he never thought he would be. And I never thought that um, I would be in this position, you know, two decades later. And um, I basically woke up from a blackout um, and I considered myself a, nor a normal college student, and I can look back in hindsight and see that there was uh, underlying issues developing and um, consumption of alcohol and binge drinking. And, um, and I woke up to a blackout, handcuffed to a hospital gurney, and being told by a state trooper, Corporal Bur Burke, and now I'm awake, I remember everything from this point on, told me, and he told me I was in a, a motor vehicle accident that resulted in the death of an 18-year-old young woman on Interstate 275. And that moment um, hit me and it shook me in my core and I just felt like my life, I felt like my soul was shattered, I felt like my life was sucked out of me. And I was acutely aware at that moment that 
somebody that was just on this earth living their life happy and um, it was just this surreal feeling that they're no longer heal here and I knew that I was very acutely aware now that there's not a ripple but a tidal wave that's about to hit her family um, with this terrible loss in this news so um, you know 20 years later I never at that moment I didn't think I'd be sitting with you yeah. two years 20 years later only God <laughs> Oh, yes. Only God can do uh, things like that. <laughs> and um, our willingness to hear him. You know, I remember the day that you came to the office and um, I, I remember going to the accident scene. I was only the only one in my family that did uh, just for identification purposes and, you know, to, to validate. And um, but then I remember, you know, you coming. And I remember when they said, announced that John Templeton Sr. and Jr. were there, uh, I started shaking and my heart was racing and I started crying. And I um, remember saying, uh, my husband came in and said, can you do this? And I said, I want to. And I remember s saying, God, um, how do I do this? And the Holy Spirit impressed on my heart, you can forgive him now or you can forgive him later, but you have to forgive him. <laughs> and um, I remember saying, I want to forgive him now. I, I don't want to carry bitterness. I don't want to, I don't want to carry a grudge. I don't want to, I don't want to be offended. I don't want to ruin any more of life. And I thought that's what Julie would want. And I knew it's what Jesus would want, but Jesus being so sweet gave me an option. <laughs> and he let me choose. And I said, if you will help me, I wanna forgive him now. And then that was the first time I came face to face with you. And I remember, you know, just seeing the sincerity and the, the vulnerability, the fear, the regret in your eyes and that made it easier, I think, you know, um, than somebody, you know, that didn't take responsibility and that didn't want to make amends. And I think that was such a huge, important heart issue. And I remember just being so impressed that at 19, you cared, you, you know, that you cared and that you wanted um, God to intervene in, in this horrible, messy, tragic, very fatal and final, you know, situation as it pertained to my sister. But I know that there was a long journey from that day forward. So what are some of the, what are some of the struggles, you know, throughout that first year, two years, three years that you went through in just wrestling with yourself and, and, uh, and walking through that? Um, you know, Jennifer, I, I look back, I, um, I was brought up in the church. Um, you know, I, I remember years ago um, as a Catholic re reading, receiving my first Holy Communion and in second grade, I put a little holy water in my bedroom and I forgot about that for years. And I, you know, it was cool at the time and I, I liked prayer and I liked, you know, asking for guidance and I, and I loved the Lord. And then I look at time went by and I got complacent. Um, it was foxhole prayers and I think about that moment meeting with you and I know that that was the guy under there the whole time that really always wanted to do the right thing and um, you know through just a lot of the temptations and um, probably insecurities and fears and we make choices as as young people and, and, and adults that I think lead us astray and I desperately wanted to come back you know and um, when I felt distant it wasn't God that moved away it was John mm -hmm. and um, and I desperately needed him there and, and um, I was surprised too um, that you were there uh, because we were invited to come to the place that you worked and um, uh, you know I knew I was guilty there was like it was I, I, I felt terrible for this family I try I had a younger I still have a younger sister and I think if somebody I have kids now and I think if somebody this happened I'd be so angry and so hurt but I would act, at least want to act how I would want that person to act and um, to try to, you know, extend, you know, just 
how sorry I was. And um, I, I know that that was my personal hell. Um, I, I, I felt so depressed. I felt so low. I don't felt at that moment, though, in that time period, um, I did, had no future. I didn't see um, any deservingness of forgiveness on, on, on my part or, or anybody. And um, I mean, that changed my life. Whether I was going to go to 15 years in prison or not, like that moment of you and your husband Rob and embracing after that and holding hands and praying, it, it was it was um, it was a divine experience and it was a divine intervention that I knew that God was there and uh, and He could carry me through this through this period. But it was um, it was a struggle for a long, long time.